So in this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called climbing stairs. So you're climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach the top. Each time you're climbing either one step or two steps. So in how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? So in this case here, you can see we have two stairs and then the output is going to be two because we can either take step by step or just two steps. For if we have only three stairs, then we can either do one by one like this or one by two, and then, uh, sorry, or, or what we can do is we can take one step and then a two step, or what we can do is we can take two step and then a one step. So the constraint is that n is less than or equal to one, uh, sorry, less than or equal to 45, and then bigger than or equal to one. So this problem is really similar to Fibonacci sequence problem, but I'm not only gonna show you how to solve this problem, I'm also gonna show you how we can improve the space complexity down to a constant uh, space complexity. So to solve this problem, what we need to do is, let's say we're given six stairs, right? So six stairs to climb up to the top. So the first step, right? The first task is either we should, either we go for, either we take one step, which we have five steps left, or two steps, which we have four steps left. So if we were to take four, uh, two steps, and then we have four steps left, then we can either take one step, which we have three steps left, or two steps, we have, which we have two steps left, right? So based on what we have before, right? Based on this result right here, you can see that if n or number of stairs is equal to two, we have two solutions. We have two unique ways. If we have three stairs, then we have three ways to climb up the top. So those are basically our base case. But if we have four steps, right? You notice that we have either uh, do it do it one by one or two one one or one one two or one two one or two two right so we have about five ways if we have four stairs so you can see that if we have three stairs the solution is three right which is equal to n but if we have four stairs then we have five ways so to calculate that you can see that this is how we calculate if we have four stairs left then there will be a total of uh, three plus two because here you can see we have, if we have two stairs, then we have two ways. If we have three stairs, we have three ways to climb to the top. So those are our, our base case, right? So in this case, to figure out how many ways we can climb to the top if we only have four stairs left, then that means we have five ways. So in this case, we have five ways to climb to the top if we only have five stairs. And that means that on the, on the right, if we have five, that means it's going to be either taking one step, which we have four steps, right? Or taking two steps, which we have three steps. Three in this case is actually equal to, to uh, three. And four in this case is actually equal to five. So in this case, we're going to take the sum of those two. In this case, is eight. So if we were to have five stairs, then we have eight unique ways. If we were to take four stairs, then we have five unique ways, right? And then what we do is we get the sum between those two. In this case, the sum between five and eight, right? Five plus eight, in this case, is 13, okay? So this is basically total ways that we can climb to the top if we have six stairs. By getting the sum, so by taking either two step or one step, right? So in this case, the, the sum between those, uh, those unique ways is 13. So now we know how to solve this problem. So I'm going to demonstrate how to, like, what are some ways to solve this problem? One way, the naive way is to basically do what exactly we did in Fibonacci sequence. Basically, we're just trying to define our base case. And if n is less than four, right, we can just return n. Otherwise, what's going to happen is we're going to get the sum for the, um, basically the, uh, the two preceding to the two preceding numbers. In this case, we're going to return climbing stairs, right? So climbing stairs n minus one plus climbing stairs n minus two, right? Because because just like what we did here, um, if we were to take two steps, we have four, right? Then we take one step, we have one, right? We want to get um, total distinct ways if we only take one steps, and we want to get a total distinct ways if we only take two steps. And the sum of those two will give us the total distinct ways to climb to the top if we only take n steps, 
right? Uh, sorry, if we only have n stairs, right? So in this case, this way works. It will give us, um, so let's try to, see. yeah, basically it will give us a big O of um, n to the power of n, right? Because you can see that we have, uh, we have many um, duplicate steps, right? Here you can see we calculate step four twice. So if we take one step, you can see we have uh, we have four stairs left. So we're basically have the, um, going to have duplicate steps. So what we can do is we can do a memoization. Basically, we can have a, um, a cache array. So in this case, what's going to happen is we're going to use a cache array. And... We're going to have an array called cache, which is equal to a size of n plus 1 because we have to include the current element. We know that the current, um, the, the number of ways to climb to the top for current, current number of stairs, right, is equal to um, uh, total unique ways for climbing, uh, if we were to take one step plus total numbers of ways to climb to the top if we only take two steps. So what's going to happen is we're going to iterate. So we're going to start from zero, right? So in this case, we're going to start from zero. I is less than less than or equal to n. We're going to traverse the entire um, numbers for, range from zero all the way to n. If n, right, if n is less than, sorry, if I is less than four, then what we're going to do is we're going to um, get cache, right? Cache at i is equal to i, right? Because that's kind of like our base case. If we have three stairs, we have three unique ways. If we have two stairs, we have two unique ways. If we have one stairs, we have one unique ways and so on, right? But if we have four stairs, then what we have to do is we have to get the previous results. So in this case, we because we saved the, the result onto the array, what we can do is we can get the current element is equal to the previous, the the um, the, the the last previous result plus the second previous the, the second last previous result from the current element. So in this case, cache at i minus one plus cache at i minus uh, minus two. Okay, this will give us. The result and at the end all we have to do is we just return cache at n okay because at the end after the the for loop i is equal to n and we already deliver we already save the result onto the cache for that slot all we had to do is we just return cache at n okay so if we were to run the code you can see we still get the result but this time we're actually getting a lot faster because we're because we're only computing each value once. Um, that means that this will give us the, a time complexity of big O of n, but the space complexity is also big O of n because as the input size scales, the space complexity also scales as well. So in this way, it will give us a big O of n for the space complexity. So how can we do this problem, or I should say, how can we solve this problem in a constant space complexity? So what we can do is, all we need to do is we need the previous two variables. So previous two um, total unique ways to climb to the top. So all we need to do is we need total unique ways if we were to climb, uh, once, if we were to take one step, how many unique ways we have, as well as how many unique ways we have if we wanted only to take two steps, right? Because that's how many, that's, there are only two options we can go. We can only take one step or two steps. So our first step is to define our base case. In this case, if n is less than 4, we can just return n, right? Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to have those variables. Instead of using an array, we're just going to use two variables, right? So in this case, we, can, we have a second pre, which is second previous. Um, so it's basically, if we were to take two steps, right? So in this case, if we were to take two steps, that's going to be our second previous total unique ways to climb to the top. In this case, at uh, beginning, it's going to be equal to 2. And we also have the last previous uh, ver value in this case is going to equal to um, 3, right? Because after we did not satisfy this condition, n is equal to or bigger than 4, okay? So then we have to start at 3, 
because three, if we have three steps, uh, three stairs, we have three unique ways. So that's our answer, right? And we also need a current. And current initially, you can't equal to zero. It doesn't really matter this, at this point. Basically, what we need to do is we're going to use a for loop. So I initially is star set four. So while I is less than or equal to n, what we're going to do is we're going to get current is equal to second brief plus the last previous element. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get second pre, which is second previous element, equal to last previous element, so that we can get, get, get those variables to be ready for the next iteration. And then we're going to get last previous element is equal to current element. At the end, all we had to do is we just return current element because that's how we um, get going from bottom to top, right? We're going from, um, from the, 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 at the beginning, right? From starting from the base case all the way to the current n element, right? So in this case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get second previous element equal to the last previous element. We get the pre last previous element equal to current element. And that's it. And then we're just going to continue to do that until we get to i is equal to n, right? We, we iterate from 4 all the way to n. And then if we were to run the code and submit, you can see we have our success. So this will basically bring the space complexity down to constant, or in other words, uh, big O of 1 for the space complexity. And then the, um, the time complexity in this case is linear. So um, basically, this is how we solve the problem. And thank you for watching.